You ready? The, the project that I chose to work on is uh, a 2D puzzle game and it's based on a puzzle version of Tetris that I've created over many years. Uh, I programmed it in different, you know, different formats but I haven't figured out a good way to deploy it so I thought maybe Unity would be uh, a good option because it claims to be cross-platform. So anyway, uh, so I'm a one-person project uh, but that's okay. Um, it was a fascinating learning experience and uh, I, I made decent progress. The game that you're going to see is not very, oh, something's wrong, but the canvas needs to get away from the playing board. Is there a way? <laughs> anyway, uh, so the game's very low, low end graphics, it's very bare bones, but uh, conceptually it's an implementation of Tetris with the variation that uh, only certain pieces are used and it has a puzzle objective so you could actually win the game or solve it. The, the objective is, the simple objective is a wipeout where you want to clear the board exactly so that the last piece clears all the rows. Is, is everyone familiar with Tetris and the row clearing mechanism and stuff? I hope. So you'll see it and figure it out if you're not. Uh, if I can, I knew I wanted to do a 2D, 2D game, grid, grid type puzzle, because that's what I've been working on a lot is developing various ideas for logic puzzles that use 2D grids. And uh, I thought Tetris might be too ambitious, so I was looking at the tutorials I found on the Unity site. There, were some, uh, there was one for Minesweeper, so I was originally going to do that. But then when I found the Tetris, Tetris tutorial, I said, oh, maybe I can go with this. So my first step was to implement the Tetris tutorial. Uh, implement the code from the Tetris tutorial which that code was for a full Tetris game with a 10 wide board and uh, all the pieces of standard Tetris but what I wanted is just a couple of pieces that work well for for the wipeout games that I do the puzzles so I just needed a T piece and an L piece so that's all I implemented um, so I adapted the the Tetris code a lot so let me just jump in and show you a quick demo if I can where's my mouse Oh, it's, there's two screens, okay. So, before the, oh, yeah, the game is already going. So you can collect, you can select which width you want. The board could be, I'll show you how that moves. When you, the board could be seven wide, or we'll start with five wide, because that's uh, easier to finish the wipeout. 10 wide, or, you know, is really slow. It's possible to play this wipeout game with wider boards, but it just takes so much longer and it's tedious. So I find that five, six, and seven are the most fun and challenging levels. And the game can be very challenging. You need to learn patterns, as you'll see. So then you have a choice of three piece options. There's either a T piece, which I'll start with, or you can do an L piece or the T and L together, which under the current implementation, they're randomly chosen, which makes the game extremely hard because you know, it's much easier to solve if you can plan ahead a little. Because uh, you get to the point where, you, and, well, I'm jumping ahead. So let's do the T piece and show the game in action. So this is what it looks like. We start with a piece down at the bottom. It randomly drops. So are my cursor keys going to work here? Yeah. All right. So there's basically four, the four arrow keys are used to control this. The pieces fall like in Tetris. Uh, so you can rotate. There's only one rotate. So right, uh, up arrow is rotate <coughs> clockwise and you can drop a piece and then the rows clear that's the Tetris mechanism so now this takes a little longer to do a wipeout but I'll show you the basic idea the, the trick is that you, you learn patterns so you'll start to see a pattern here so I can clear that and now I can clear a row by putting this it takes four pieces to clear a row so eight more pieces and I'll be down I'll, I'll get the white out. So let's just plow through that so you can see what happens. <laughs> One more. So it's, you, you see the pattern. So part of what I think is fun about this game is learning these patterns. It's challenging to figure out to learn patterns. This sort of like macros or, oh, look at that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, so let's just try one. I don't know how much time I have, so I'll just do one more so we can discuss what went into it. Oh, there were a number of sort of steps forward in, in the learning experience. First was implementing the Tetris game modified to use only the two pieces. So I started with just the two pieces. And, uh, and then 
Uh, let's see, the next step, I wanted to set up controls to let me select. You know, so the first thing I, I did was the, the width buttons to modify the width. There's just one thing that's controlled, which is the, the right border, as you saw it. Uh, you know, moves around. So, so learning to move that was my first learning experience. I was happy when I got that to work. And I had to figure out along the way how to make buttons work, how to connect to them, and you know, run scripts from buttons and things like that. It was very challenging, and I had never programmed in C Sharp before, so that was a challenge in itself. <clears throat> but you know, I made progress with that. Once I figured out buttons, I said, "All right, I'm running with buttons. I'm going <laughs> to use buttons for all they're worth." So I tried to do the, the piece selection buttons and then the start buttons. And the stop button doesn't quite work. It sort of works, but it seems to create something wrong in the data structure so that when I run the next game, it crashes. <laughs> so that's not good. So I avoid the stop button now. All right, so let me show you the six wide board with the T piece also. Or maybe I should do the L piece just to show you a different piece because I may not be able to get beyond this. So. Yeah, this will work. So one of the patterns you learn is that with two L pieces together, you can make a two by four rectangle. So if I put this one down here, then the other one completes the two by four rectangle. And that rectangle, you can see, fills in the, uh, the remaining pieces. So that, that wipes that one out. <laughs> and, and I won't have time to finish it, but I'll just show you what happens when you have random pieces. Let's do it with say the five wide board. Um, so you see, so we randomly get an L or a T piece now. And notice there's only one kind of L, which is the LL, not the reflected L. So how do I want to do this? Yeah. So, so part of the problem here is that this L will not turn around to go in the other direction. So now I, if I'm fast, I can slip things in before it falls. <laughs> so I implemented the drop so that it drops, uh, let me just get my piece ready. I want it to go there. So drop will drop but not freeze the piece. So it, the code actually waits until, uh, until there's a fall. You, know, you see that every second the piece tries to fall another step. In. And the piece freezes when it can't successfully fall in response to a fall action. So, all right, this isn't great. Anybody have any questions? Yeah, you can start asking questions while I muck with this. <laughs> have you actually completed it with the random TNL yet? Oh yeah, absolutely. It's just a little more tedious, like I said. <laughs> it takes, no, it's definitely doable, it just, Sometimes it takes multiple tries because, all right, here's, here's a trick, is I'm preparing for L's. So I didn't get an L, but I could put a T in here. If I get an L next, good, then I could put this here, and now I, if I get an L, I'll wipe out all those three rows. So I want to do things like that. <laughs> uh, let's see. And, yeah, all right, this could work. I get another L, no, didn't. so how do I want to do this? So you don't always get the piece you want, of course, because it's random. All right, let's see how this works. This will get it down to almost one row. Ah. Boo, I didn't want more L pieces, but I have to decide what to do with it. I guess I'll just bite the bullet and do that. So, all right, now try again. Yes, now if I, whichever, I prefer a T piece now, yeah, okay. So I can get it down to one cell. I'm close to a white out, but not what I wanted. All right, if I can get a T piece. Oh, this is good. I like getting, making the shape of a T piece at the bottom because there is a way to win if I get the right pieces. So, L, I need a T and an L. Okay, let's hope for an L next. Yay! <laughs> All right. <laughs> so that's that.
So I think this is a fun game. Um, what was this? There was a second thing. Oh, the, the scripting was a big challenge, and uh, learning to get learning to get the, the buttons to work properly. Uh, oh, the text. That's what I, I I did last night. I figured out how to enable text. Someone gave me a hint that I wanted to set enabled true or something, but it was very hard in one script that detected the wipeout. So I wrote the code last night to detect the wipeout by checking for all the rows cleared. There's a grid that's hidden behind this little a matrix, you know, that has, holds, uh, you know, blocks, and <coughs> the script operates on that. And so, so I had this, the script that, uh, <coughs> you know, the checks for the wipeout, and if it finds there's a wipeout, then it needs to call another script to, well, it basically needs to, you know, tell the text to, to enable so that you can see it. So I created the text, but. It, and disabled it at the start, but then I needed to be able to programmatically or in the script turn it off and on, which <laughs> these things sound simple, but they're non-trivial <laughs> when you're first encountering them. So uh, I struggled, you know, look, doing Googling, looking for things like how to, uh, how to, how to find an object. And so there's, uh, what, you know, find object by type, and then there's uh, game object dot find, which lets you find by name, which was very useful. So once I figured that out, I could look up my, uh, I think it was the text object. Yeah, I had I had a text object that I created, but that wasn't good enough. I needed to get the text component itself, so I had to call get component and figure out what kind of specification to put after that to tell it what kind of component to find. The syntax was tricky. One one website said you, you needed a dot before the text, the you know, angle bracket text, and another one. But what worked was not having the dot there. So there's misinformation out there, or else Unity changed, I don't know. But finally I got it, and I thought there was a method called enable that I could say, you know, enable or disable, but it turns out it's a variable. It's a I guess a component variable or something that you can set to true or false. Finally, I figured it out and I was able to get the, the congratulatory text to appear. So. All right.